Hello, my name is Erica Lorraine Milam. I first came to the Max Planck Institute for the History of Science in 2007 as a postdoctoral fellow in Department 2. And in that initial year and a half, I finished writing my first book, Looking for a Few Good Males, Female Choice in Evolutionary Biology. I then returned to Department 2 as a research scholar in 2015-16, uh, during which time I finished my second book, Creatures of Cain, The Hunt for Human Nature in Cold War America. As a result, I feel a huge debt to the Institute for providing me with both time and intellectual camaraderie. I, I do feel as though I am a better scholar as a result of my time there. So thank you sincerely and happy birthday. Greetings from the Bauhaus and Weimar. I'm Henning Schmidtgen and my research mostly deals with the history of experimental physiology and psychology. From 1997 until 2011, I was in Department 3, then headed by Hans Weinberger. Today, I'm Professor of Media Studies at the Bauhaus University in Weimar, where I develop virtual laboratories for future research in the humanities. I guess the most important thing the MPI gave me is a sense of creative heterogeneity. That is the importance of designing and populating research groups in such a way that they allow for smooth cooperation as well as for unexpected encounters and evocative events. So in that sense, congratulations dear MPI and all best wishes for the years to come. Hi colleagues, my name is Che Qin. I was with the Department 3 of MPFG from uh, October 2016 to June 2018. I used to work as the digital projects manager there, uh, which was to coordinate the digital projects in-house and to do my own research with digital tools. I'm currently with the Shanghai Jiao Tong University of China and my field is the epidemic history of parasitic disease around the middle stream of Yangtze River. It was such a great experience working and learning in the MPVG. I currently start to deliver my own digital projects of, of, of Chinese genealogies. I would particularly convey my gratitude and my respect to the digital teams, Shi Pei, uh, Kelvin, Brandt, Xiong, Nong Yao, Pascal, and Florian. It was definitely things I learned from them helped to, 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 to build the foundation of this. Thank you so much. Anyway, I wish a great success to the future of MPAVG and happy birthday. Hello. Hello, uh, my name is Robert Schulman, and I want to heartily congratulate the Max Planck Institute for the History of Science on its 25th anniversary. It's rare that one finds such an ideal oasis and uh, an intellectual home away from home. I particularly want to single out uh, the director of Department 1, Jürgen Wren, for his unfailing kindness, intellectual curiosity and stimulation, and the other staff of the department and of the entire institute for their assistance in all matters, computer and otherwise. Congratulations once again, and vivat. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jonathan Stern. I'm a professor at McGill University in Montreal, where it's currently minus 20. So it's important to note that right this minute, I'm not in Montreal, I'm in Maui where it is not minus 20. I've been to the Max Planck several times. The last time was the longest for four months in the fall of 2017. I shared an office with Mara Mills. We called it Heisenberg's Bathroom. And we're working on a book together on the history of time stretching and time compression technologies for audio as part of uh, Victoria's acoustics group. It was a wonderful experience meeting everybody in the group and interacting with senior colleagues, students, uh, people from all over. Um, I guess my biggest single memory would be uh, the chase around Germany for German time stretching and time compression 
uh, technologies developed in the mid 20th century using uh, modified tape players. Uh, with the help of Fabian, a uh, graduate student research assistant, we also managed to track down Anton Springer's family. Uh, his son gave us access to Springer's papers, which are now held by the Max Planck, and we also even got to interview his son um, and uh, make use of some of that material, and that's going to become a big part of the book Mara and I are writing. Over the course of the, I've been to the Max Planck several times since 2006, and over the course of those visits, it's really been a point of entry into German academe, where I've met people in the history of science community, but also in media studies, in music, um, and also in the music and arts communities, practitioners, artists, creative people, and then Berlin's become a kind of sex, second intellectual home for me. So it's really, uh, it's been quite an experience, and I'm very grateful for the opportunities that the Institute has given me. So, on the 25th anniversary of the Max Planck, I wish you many happy returns and uh, a wonderful celebration. Hello, my name is Sereka Davis. I'm a long-term fellow at the John Carter Brown Library in Providence, Rhode Island. I was at the MPI for the summer of 2017, working on the beginning of my new second book project, collecting artifacts in the Age of Empire, about cabinets of curiosities and ideas about nature, culture, and art. One of my abiding memories is of the art historian Jaya Ramond, now at Harvard's Itati in Florence. And we had many long conversations uh, since we work on the intersection of Renaissance art and science. Now in the era before photography, it was essential that you be able to draw or to paint if you wanted to make knowledge about descriptive nature, for example, anatomy or biology. Jaya encouraged me to think even more boldly about the way in which the cognitive connections between early art and science offer a rich legacy to inspire scientific practices today. Thank you, MPI, for bringing us together. Happy 25th birthday, and here's to another 25 great years. I'm John Norton. I'm a professor of history and philosophy of science at the University of Pittsburgh. Einstein's greatest discovery was his general theory of relativity. The decisive period for the making of this discovery happened sometime around the end of 1912 towards the beginning of 1913 uh, after Einstein had moved uh, to Zurich. There he took some inchoate ideas about gravity and a connection to certain geometrical structures in space and time that we now identify as curvature structures and merged them together to provide the framework of the general theory of relativity. The work that resulted from that, the so-called Entwurf theory, published towards the middle of 1913, had the basic structure of the general theory of relativity and even considered what would be the final gravitational field equations near enough that Einstein would uh, uh, publish later in 1915. However, there was a difficulty. Einstein abandoned those equations, published a different set of equations that did not survive, uh, and then suffered terrible tortures over the next few years as he tried to figure out what had gone wrong. If there's one period in Einstein's life where we'd like to be able to look over his shoulder and understand exactly what he was up to, it would be this period. This was the period of Einstein's greatest creativity in his greatest discovery. Of course, that's not possible. Einstein's no longer with us, and we can't go back in time and, and have a look at what happened there. But fortune has given us something that is close enough to it to make it very interesting. The notebook of calculations that Einstein undertook while he was, while he was uh, working on exactly this period uh, has survived. This is the so-called Zurich notebook. I had the great fortune to be involved in a research group that investigated this Zurich notebook and sought to decipher its content. Uh, the uh, project started out at the Max Planck Institute for Bildungsforschung and then moved to the Max Planck Institute for History of Science uh, uh, um, under the direction of Jorgen Wren. The work was done largely in the 1990s. It's a very exciting project. 
Every summer a group of us would meet. The group was simply collected together as all of those people in the universe who had an interest in the problem and had the expertise to work on it. We would then project the pages of the notebook one at a time onto a screen and stare at them. Now we had to do this because the pages of this notebook did not contain calculations that were intended for other people to read. They are Einstein's own private calculations and they were simply intended for him. So when you initially look at the pages, you cannot understand what they're about. You have to reconstruct the thinking, gradually work through what each of the symbols mean, how the equations fit together. And as this process unfolds, as we sat there staring at the images on the screen, as we bounced ideas around and talked to one another about what this could be and what that could be, then slowly and beautifully the thinking of Einstein appeared, the mind of Einstein appeared. It was a wonderful and exciting set of meetings, and those meetings in turn led to a huge amount of research that was eventually written up and published in these four volumes, The Genesis of General Relativity, edited by Jorgen Wren. Uh, these four volumes have, of course, become the uh, canonical reference for anyone who's interested in the discovery of general relativity and the Zurich Notebook. I count myself as very fortunate uh, that I was uh, able to be involved in this particular research community. Uh, it is a paradigm to me of how, productive, uh, how productively people can work together uh, to make uh, uh, interesting uh, history of, of science. Hi, I'm David Bellow, Professor of East Asian History at Washington Lee University in Lexington, Virginia, USA. From May to July of 2017, I was part of Department 3's joint project with Friedrich Alexander University in Erlangen on accounting for uncertainty, prediction and planning in Asia's history. I worked specifically on locust plagues in 18th century China, and in conjunction with several MPIWG colleagues, have gone on to develop a book project provisionally entitled Insect Histories of East Asia. I predict with no uncertainty whatsoever that when our Insect Histories project succeeds, it will be because of the support of MPIWG faculty and staff. My warmest greetings to MPIWG on its 25th anniversary. I'm Karine Shemla, a member of the Sphere Group at CNRS and also the University of Paris Diderot. I'm currently based at the Max Planck Institute for Wissenschaftsgeschichte, Department 2. And I'm uh, working on the history of mathematics in China, more precisely at the moment, at the Max Planck Institute, I'm completing a project that I have launched with Glenn Most on the history of mathematical commentaries. I've met Glenn in the context of the Max Planck Institute, or perhaps I should say that I was, I spent several um, summers at the Max Planck Institute completing introductions to collective volumes and to complete them, I had to hide. One summer, Glenn Most was there and he was responsible for a collective project. I knew he was there, I wanted to meet him, but I compelled myself not to go out of my office, not to meet anyone. And unfortunately, it was later that I met Glenn and that we formed the project that we are now completing of working on mathematical commentaries with a group. The Max Planck Institute is both a place where one can write, when one can achieve projects, and a wonderful place where one can meet all kinds of people. So I wish the Max Planck Institute, who celebrates his 25th birthday and at the same time will undergo a very important change. I wish the Max Planck Institute to remain a place where you can meet many important and interesting colleagues from all over the world, meet with all kinds of young people who are completing wonderful projects and still work intensively on what you are writing. Thanks for everything and all best wishes. 
I remember my time at the Max Planck Institute with a lot of joy and gratitude. It was a very important time in my life, not only intellectual, but uh, personally. I remember with special uh, joy the, the meetings of the early modern times group with Paul Weinig, Michele Camerota, Mario Helbing and the Max Planck staff, uh, Wolfgang Lefebvre, Peter Damero, Jürgen Renn and many others. Of course, the administrations and Sopor staff, Petra Schröder, Xavier Ledevaro, Lindy Dibacci, uh, Jörg Kantl, Norbert Fiebig, and of course, I remember Peter, Malcolm, Giuseppe, and of course, Antje. I could consider a lot of moments and situations, but the mo I think that the, my gratitude is for the people I meet there. I think that the most important element of the Institute is its people. Uh, do you know, Institute, I love you. I love you very much. Hello, my name is Monserrat de Pablo. I live in Madrid, Spain, and I am an assistant professor of photography in the Faculty of Fine Art in Cuenca at the University of Castilla-La Mancha. I first came to the Max Planck Institute for the History of Science in 2013 when I was working on my doctoral thesis on the history of the camera obscura as prehistory of photography. And since then, I've been visiting Escola, an artist in residence in Department 1. Currently, I'm working on a camera obscura interactive database and timeline, and also I'm working on the project in camera out together with Antonio Becchi. It is a series of women portraits of people related with the Institute or the History of Science. For me, this has been a wonderful opportunity to learn a lot about History of Science and the Institute, but mostly about life itself. Wolfgang Lefebvre has been a very important figure for me, always encouraged me to go on with my projects. I have to congratulate all of you who run this wonderful place not only for the academic excellence, but also for the community you have created. And I wish you all the best for the next stage. Hello, I am Lino Camprovi, and I was for three years a research scholar in Department 2, and then for one year a visiting scholar in the group of Epistemes of Modern Acoustics. I now work at the University of Sevilla, and I speak to you from Reales Alcázares. This was in the 16th century, the Casa de Contratación, where the American Empire was managed not only collecting taxes, but also collecting goods and information from sailors and captains. I have chosen this location to stress the role of institutions in the production and circulation of knowledge. And of course, to thank the MPIVG for being such an institution. Hasta la vista. Hello. My name is Michael Stanley Baker, and I'm an assistant professor of history at Nanyang Technological University, Singapore. I was a postdoc in Department 3 of the Max Planck Institute from 2013 to 2017. While I was there, I met so many intelligent and dynamic people from around the world, all working on cutting-edge approaches to the history of science. From the vantage point of the Institute, one gets a privileged view of the latest forthcoming research and a clear sense for how the major issues in the field are developing. It was like getting a second degree in a new discipline for me. The interdisciplinarity of the Institute was very inspiring. People came from so many different fields, European history, sinology, archaeology, art history, computer science. This was very productive, as we all learned to go beyond the conceptual assumptions of our individual disciplines in order to communicate how our research spoke to common themes in the Institute. This raised the conceptual bar considerably, encouraging people to be more reflective about the way they frame their topics, while remaining rigorous about the detail of their research. There were many individuals who inspired me, including the stellar leadership of Rainy Dassen and Dagmar Schaefer, who modeled, for me, how to manage a complex research portfolio, to stay abreast of the most recent developments in the field, and how to sensitively frame new research they encountered within a much broader set of conversations, both within the history of science and beyond. Sonia Brentjes and Martina Schlunder were two very inspiring friends and intellectual companions during my time there. Sonia was a fellow advocate and a champion 
and a model of that fine balance between philological rigor and critical inquiry. Her ability to smell a misreading of a text or an oversimplified claim about a source was unerring, and I found myself agreeing with her constantly in seminars. Martina Schlunder introduced me, in her very personal and engaging way, to the successors of Ludwig Fleck, in Latour, Annemarie Moll, and Helen Varen, who have become touchstones for my own interventions in the study of Chinese religion. I owe her an enormous debt of gratitude for our early conversations, and then later for a personal meeting with Helen Varen, who gave me excellent, succinct, and very practical advice on how to spot and describe what she calls a clot or an assemblage. Simply answer five questions. How do they know? What do they know? How do they know they know? How is knowledge valued? And who is it that knows? By answering these, you can address the questions of method or practice, ontology, epistemology, axiology, and subjectivity. And there you have a clot or an assemblage. These approaches have strongly shaped my understanding of the emergence of distinctions between religion and medicine in early imperial China and the central role that's played in that by discourses of practice. And this has been sort of become my hallmark um, contribution for uh, the history of, of religions and the history of medicine uh, in this period. However, I benefited most palpably from Chen Shipei and Dagmar, who invested their energy and finances into my study of Chinese Materia Medica. The Drugs Across Asia, Pro Asia project has identified all the Materia Medica in almost all Buddhist, Taoist, and medical writing up to the year 589, when China reunified under the Sui and Tang dynasties. I'm currently writing up these preliminary findings which include new discoveries about the transmission of Indian drug lore into China in the 5th century, as well as a novel argument about the geographic origin of a text recently excavated in Chengdu. By mapping the locations where the drugs in that text are said to come from, according to other medical texts that I've marked up in the project, I've been able to argue that the original recipes most likely came from northwestern China, despite the fact that the manuscript was discovered in the southwest. In so doing, I've been able to apply early drug geography to corroborate arguments made from linguistic, paleographic, and mythographic evidence by other colleagues. Based on these accomplishments and in the spirit of the interdisciplinar interdisciplinary collaboration that is at the heart of the Max Planck, I'm now organizing a new project to develop parallel digital corpuses in Sanskrit, Arabic, Latin, Greek, and Hebrew, and explore new tools for linking drug terms across these languages in order to study at scale the transmission of Materia Medica across Eurasia over time. This direction is inspired by some of the workshops I witnessed at the Max Planck, such as Pamela Smith's ongoing inquiry into itineraries or Elaine Leung's workshops on testing and cures, as well as on translation. Although I'm no longer physically in the Max Planck Institute, I can say that what I learned there has indelibly shaped my career and enabled me to contribute to scholarship beyond what I could have imagined when I first walked through its doors and has been of marked benefit to my career. To all those members of the Institute, present and past, I want to send my sincere thanks and warm affection and gratitude for making this environment possible. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ready? Hello, my name is Patricia Farrer and I'm from the University of Cambridge and from 98 to 99 I had a year's fellowship at the Max Planck Institute in Berlin. It was one of the best years of my whole life. I was working on the Scientific Persona project and it was there that I just about finished my book on Isaac Newton and his reputation. It was a very exciting time for Germany, 98-99, but it was also a very exciting time for me because one of the things I did while I was there was trace my own family ancestry. And my father came from a family of Jewish lawyers and he'd had to emigrate uh, in 1933 when he was only a little boy. And one of the things that I did while I was there is do some research into my own family history and I found out what none of us had ever known before, that my great-grandfather had gone to Theresienstadt and then he died 
in Auschwitz. So it was very moving for me to carry out that research at the same time as the academic research I was doing in the Institute. So happy 25th birthday to everybody at the Max Planck Institute. Hello, my name is Michael Gordon and I was first introduced to the Max Planck Institute for Wissenschaftsgeschichte back in 1997 as a graduate student for a conference. Then I came back as a visitor in Department 2 in 2007-2008 and have been back for conferences and visits ever since. Uh, almost always with Department 2, but it's been a pleasure to meet everybody at the Institute. I am now at Princeton University where I'm a professor in the History of Science. I sh have met so many people over the years at the Max Planck, it's very hard to single out all of them or at least express them here, but I probably would be remiss if I didn't say that I met my wife there. In any event, thanks to the MPI for everything it has done for me and for the field, and a hearty congratulations on your 25th birthday. My name is Diana Buckwald, and I'm the director of the Einstein Papers Project at Caltech in Pasadena, and I send congratulations to everyone at the Max Planck Institute for the History of Science on its 25th anniversary. My several visits there have been memorable, especially the wonderful stimulating conferences uh, and the quiet and inviting library and the engaging group meetings led by Jürgen. Uh, many, many thanks to the splendid staff and all the researchers and all the young people who have come and will be coming through your doors. My name is Christian DePay. I'm an associate professor of history at the University of Michigan. I spent nine months um, at Department 3 of the Max Planck Institute for the History of Science from September 2016 through May 2017. Um, I was working on an intellectual history of the city in 11th century China, specifically on natural analogies that were used uh, by officials in the 11th century to understand finance and the economy. I found the Institute to be an ideal place of academic engagement uh, with lots of youthful energy and creativity and plenty of stimulating conversation with a variety of people from a variety of disciplines. Uh, and I hope that this will continue for many, many more years to come. I was grateful to be there I learned a lot, and I hope that many, many more peace people will get the chance and that I may return. My name is Roland Wittje. I teach History of Science and Technology at the Indian Institute of Technology, Madras. Been a frequent visiting scholar at the Epistems of Modern Acoustics Group since 2015. My time at the MPI was instrumental for finishing my work on the history of electroacoustics. And in 2016, I made a small film on the speaking and singing art together with Paolo Brani in Florence. I will be back with a new project on the history of arts and craft and musical instrument making in South India. I am Nelly Dias, professor at the Department of Anthropology at the University Institute of Lisbon. My research deals with the history of French anthropology in the 19th century and the social and cultural history of collecting practices. My first stay at the Institute was in 2010 as visiting scholar at the Department 2. It was at that time that I met Fernando Vidal, who invited me to participate in the working group Endangerment and its Consequences, part of the project the Sciences of the Archive, organized at the Department 2. From 2011 to 2015, I returned quite often to the Institute, co-organizing with Vidal two workshops and co-editing the book Endangerment, Biodiversity and Culture, that was published in 2015. I would like to thank Lauren Dawson for her support and the many opportunities offered at the Institute. The Institute is a unique place. May it continue to welcome scholars from different backgrounds, places and disciplines. Hey, Michel Janssen here from uh, Minnesota. Congratulations. 
I still remember the pioneering days in the early 90s when uh, I, I was sitting there overlooking the wasteland that is now Potsdamer Platz in the offices next to me, John Stachel, Yehuda el -Kana. On the other end of the hallway, the offices of Jürgen Renn uh, and Petra Schröter and Oat Parnas. Uh, Oat Parnas was not a research coordinator then. He was a lowly pre-doctoral fellow, just like me. And 50% of the time, he was actually helping a guy known only as Attila the Hun to put together IKEA furniture for the guest apartments that the Institute had bought in Mitte. So I was living there next to uh, John and Evelyn Stachel. And I remember that at one point, like Evelyn thought that the Institute should spring for a VCR. And uh, that prompted a comment by Wolfgang Lefebvre that I've always remembered. And Wolfgang said, like, man kann sich diesem Institut gegenüber doch nicht benehmen, als wäre es ein Hotelbetrieb. Well, Wolfgang, you're absolutely right. The Institute is not a hotel. It's a home. It's a home. Congratulations. John DeMoya, greetings from Seoul. I was at MPI Department 3 under Dagmar Schaffer from January 2016 through August 2016, and again from August 2017 through December 2017. I have many great memories of MPI. In particular, I want to thank the various people working on the edited volume, Sarah Blacker, Sarah Von Burden, and others. It hasn't come out yet, of course. And I put together an edited volume with Aaron Moore, who was also later in Department 3, called Engineering Asia, and Hiromi Mizuno, who has been a visitor. Um, my quick story is not with uh, colleagues, though, just colleagues, although, although they're great memories, but also I have fond memories of the Berlin Fox, or Foxes, which lived outside MPI, which I ran across many times on the Fire University campus. And of course, Muppet the Research Dog, who also made a great contribution to research in MPI. I'm sure many people remember Muppet. And I hope Muppet is alive and prospering in Berlin. Um, thank you very much for both collegial memories and animal memories. And I want to say happy 25th anniversary to MPI from Seoul. Greetings. Thanks very much. I'm Thomas Sturm. I was at the Institute from 2005 to 2009 as a Lawrence Kruger Fellow and then as a research fellow in the Rain Dastens department. I now am an ICREA Research Professor for Philosophy and History of Science in Barcelona. When I came to the Institute, I was most puzzled and provoked by its core concept, historical epistemology. I was asking myself, is that supposed to be a history of knowledge, a history of theories of knowledge? Does it even have philosophical ambitions and how could these possibly be realized? With Oriana Feist and with the support of all three departments and their directors, Ren, Weinberger and Destin, we did a conference on the same topic and published later on a special issue of the philosophical journal Erkenntnis on that topic with many fascinating contributions from leading philosophers and historians of science. I also worked with Destin on the relation between the Cold War and theories of rationality. That's a topic that keeps me busy up until today. So I have all the reasons to thank the Max Planck Institute and to wish it well on its anniversary. All the best. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Lop San Yandan. I originally come from Tibet. Currently, I'm working as a researcher at uh, University of Bonn in Germany. I'm working in social history of Tibet. Between September and December 2016, I came to Max Planck Institute for History of Science as a research, uh, visiting research fellow at the Department of Three. And, um, the, uh, Professor Dagmar Schaff. Uh, during my stay, I have researched um, this 18th century Tibetan Lama who, were, who introduced Pythagorean theory into Tibet. Uh, during my, uh, I, then I finished a paper on this um, just recently uh, published in a peer reviewed journal in Paris. Uh, during my stay, I really enjoyed this experience. I find the place is very stimulating and uh, colleagues are very open-minded and they're very helpful and the librarians, even Anton, is very, very helpful and I really like the place. So I would like to thank for um, uh, Dagmar Chef and others for giving me this opportunity and this experience. Now, as 25th year's anniversary of its establishment Max Planck Institute, uh, Max, <laughs> Max Planck Institute History of Science, uh, and I would like to say happy anniversary. And we Tibetans say, Jashdele. And uh, thank you very much. Bye. 
Hello and greetings to the Max Planck Institute for the History of Science on its 25th anniversary. My name is Pamela Smith. I teach in the History Department at Columbia. I am the director of the Center for Science and Society and I direct the Making and Knowing Project and I teach history and history of science of early modern Europe and of the world. I have had so much contact and so many trips to the Max Planck Institute that I have lost count over the past 30 years. Um, I was, I know that I was um, at many conferences in Department 1, in Department 2. Um, I went to a lot of conferences with the Art and Knowledge Research Group of Sven Dupre. Um, and then I was in residence uh, for part of a summer in Department 3. And I shared an office with Marta Hansen, and we had such interesting conversations that I didn't get nearly as much reading and research as I hoped to do that summer. But I did take one thing away uh, with me from that um, residency, which was that Marta taught me about edible dogwood berries. And I think they were ripe at that time. Um, and so that was something, you know, urban foraging that I could take away with me. And then I was in residence also at Dar Department 2 for part of a year uh, with uh, Rainey's group. And um, that was just an, another wonderful experience. A lot of conversation, um, a lot of really interesting conversation about recipes and techniques with Elaine Leong and many of the other people who were there at that time. Beginning in about 2014 and lasting for a few years, I was the director of a working research group on itineraries of materials, recipes, techniques, and objects in the early modern world. At the end of that project, in the last summer, uh, the final essay writers for an edited volume came together in a co-writing um, session of two weeks, which was just a wonderful, um, you know, congenial and really, really interesting, intense kind of collaboration. And it was so exhilarating to write together and to be able to talk with each other about each other's work, um, you know, on a kind of continuous basis. And that was, you know, something that I really hope that every scholar, young and old, gets to do at some point in their careers because it's just such an exhilarating thing to write. Um, historical research together or write historical work together. That edited volume is going to be published any day now uh, and it's entitled Entangled Itineraries of Materials, Practices, and Knowledges Across Eurasia. So um, during my, you know, all of my contact with the Max Planck Institute, I was also on the Scientific Advisory Board for some years. Uh, but during all of this time and all of these different um, perspectives uh, that I got on the Max Planck Institute, I feel like personally and as a scholar, it was so formative for me. And it has also been really formative for the discipline of history of science. It has really set the projects, it has set the direction, it has been an incredible force um, in the history of science. And so on this, you know, 25 year um, anniversary of the Institute, I just want to say thank you for all that it's done for me, for the field, for my students, uh, for early career scholars, for young and old <laughs> scholars. Uh, and to say, I, you know, long may it endure. On behalf of the Institute for the History of Nature Sciences, Chinese Academy of Sciences, I would like to express the warmest congratulations to the 25th anniversary of the Max Planck Institute for the History of Science. Headed by Professor Jorge Hirn and other directors, the Max Planck Institute for the History of Science has become the world's leading institution in the field of the history of science 
and the technology. Scholars from all over the world share the knowledge and the happiness at your place. We believe that the Max Planck Institute for the History of Science will create a more significant chapter in the course of your pursuit. And our cooperation will be more productive in the future. 我代表自然科学史研究所衷心祝贺马普科学史研究所建所二十五周年，希望研究所在未来取得更伟大的成就。Hello, my name is Raviv Gantro. I was fortunate enough to be an artist in resident at the Epistems of Modern Acoustics Group in 2016. At the time, I was working on a project entitled "Padded Sounds: The Latent Orality of Anechoic Chambers," that was dealing with spatial ontologies and sonic epistemologies、uh, that were hatched in anechoic practices and experimentation. Uh, I remember my time at the Max Planck Institute as incredibly productive. But also very fondly for the、uh, conversations with other working groups and、uh, working teams、uh, that put the questions that I was asking into much broader social and historical perspective.、Um, also, just for the brilliant group at the Epistems of Modern Acoustics,、uh, Victoria, Birgitta,、uh, Kate, and Eric. And it's only after I returned to Amsterdam that I realized I may have suffered a kind of knowledge overdose. Uh, never had I been immersed in such、uh, an abundance of primary sources, and、uh, in a sense, the time spent there still nourishes、uh, my practice and、uh, opened up other horizons and questions、uh, relating to sonic,、uh, the historicity of hearing and sonic ontologies. So,、uh, happy 25th anniversary, Max Planck Institute. And thank you to everyone who continues making this such an extraordinary environment. Greetings from Amsterdam. Hi, and happy anniversary to my favorite MPI. My name is Uliana Feist, and I'm currently a professor of philosophy at the Leibniz University in Hanover. I spent three very happy years at the MPI between 2003 and 2006. There are many things I remember fondly about my time at the MPI, such as, of course, the amazing research conditions, very helpful staff, and a diverse and international set of great and interesting colleagues. But what was especially exciting to me was the sense that the MPI had been founded on a vision of practicing a kind of integrated history and philosophy of science, also known as historical epistemology. I'm especially grateful to Hans-Jörg Reinberger for providing the space that made it possible for many of us to thrive. But I want to emphasize that I have also greatly appreciated my friendships with members of the other two groups, and I would like to thank the other two directors that were that were there during my stay: Rainy Dastan and Jürgen Renn. Lastly. I would like to take the opportunity to remember the beautiful, kind, and intelligent Antje Radek. Best wishes to all of you, and I'm very sorry I can't be there with you to celebrate. Happy anniversary! I'm Sebastian Felton. I was a postdoctoral research fellow at Department Two between 2015 and 2018. And I'm currently a lecturer at the History of Science Chair at the University of Vienna. My doctoral work was in financial and social history, and I must have had quite a narrow idea of the history of science before、um, I got to the institute. So I was elated, but also a little shocked that、um, when I was offered the, the fellowship, because I thought my project on、um, notating practices in early modern mining administrations was a little Too eccentric for the MPI.、Um, I quickly discovered that science is at the MPI was a very broad church, and that there were, in fact, many scholars across various departments and research groups who worked directly on my topic, early modern mining. Tina Asmussen, Ursula Klein, Helge Wendt, and later Peter Konechny. But conversations unfolded across periods and regions. I felt myself 
using many different metaphors to describe the magic of the Institute. And I think one that stuck with me was that of a well-curated art exhibition where, uh, in which individual works illuminate um, in a thousand subtle ways the, the work of others. For example, my office mate Ben Wilson once read the same books as I by Philip Morowski, providing an intersection between my topic, only one in economics, and his nuclear deterrence strategy. I'm very grateful that some of these conversations could be given a more regular form when Christina von Erzsen, Philip Lehmann, and I were given the possibility to form a working group on the history of bureaucratic knowledge, which enriched my own work in incalculable ways. With one of the members of the group, Anna Echterholte, I'm closely collaborating in Vienna now. Underpinning all this was the hard work of members of staff in administrations and the library, for whom I was very grateful and still am, especially Ruth Casentini and Ellen Garske, promptly found even obscure books and papers and showed me great kindness, patience and humor throughout. I miss the library a lot. But for now, for now all that remains to say is, Happy birthday, MPEVG. I wish I could be there to celebrate. Hi, everyone. This is Yang Gao, and I was at the Max Planck Institute for the History of Science from January to February of 2017. And um, I was working with Dr. Che Qin and Dr. Chen Shipei on the local gazetteer project. Um, uh, for now, I'm at, uh, I'm a research associate at Duke University. Um, so when I was at uh, the Max Planck Institute for the History of Science, and I was working at um, uh, extracting data on the birds and to looking at how the birds' diversity changed, um, in historical times and how the ecological knowledge was recorded in the literary traditions. And I have some preliminary results and right now and um, I'm looking to revise the data uh, for further um, uh, investigation. Um, when I was at the Max Planck Institute, I was mind blown by the intellectual inspiring inspirations provided by the community and was such a, a vibrant uh, academic community which had the best support um, for research. I truly appreciate my time at uh, the Max Planck Institute for History of Science and I wish you um, um, the intellectual community at um, uh, the Max Planck Institute uh, continue to thrive and a very happy 25th anniversary. Thank you. Pietro Model, I'm a historian of science and a professor of historical epistemology at Ca Foscari University of Venice in Italy. I worked and made my research at the Max Planck Institute for the History of Science in Berlin from 2010 to 2017. What I learned there is how to bring together philosophy and the history of science and become a historical epistemologist. On the occasion of the Jubileum, I wish to all scholars in Berlin to continue working in philosophy and science and sociology of science and epi historical epistemology. For the future, alles Gute zum Geburtstag des Instituts. <music> Hello, I'm Stefan Müllerwille, uh, for now at the University of Exeter and in the foreseeable future at the University of Cambridge. Uh, I would like to 
say happy birthday to the whole institute. I spent time there uh, roughly from uh, 1996 to 2004. Um, I enjoyed my time a lot, learned everything about how to run projects, uh, interact with colleagues from all over the world and just have a good time uh, every now and then as well, especially in Berlin at the Max Planck Institute and uh, it has uh, been a time that has shaped my career, I can say. Um, so um, you should all celebrate um, and I'm sorry that I can't be there. Bye-bye. I'm Mara Mills. I'm an associate professor of media, culture, and communication at New York University. Happy birthday. My first invitation to the MPI took place in summer 2004. I was a participant in the graduate student science on screen summer school. I can honestly say that it changed the course of my career. Um, I was just starting out in the History of Science grad program at Harvard. I had been a biologist. Um, lo and behold, that summer I was introduced to German media studies and media history. Here I am now. Um, I also met some of the people who had become my closest collaborators, uh, people like John Trash and Victoria Tachik. Victoria is running her own group at the MPI now, um, Epistemes of Modern Acoustics. I will be back there this summer as a fellow, uh, studying hearing instead of vision and testing instead of experiment. Thank you for the best company on this intellectual journey. Liebes Max Planck Institut für Wissenschaftsgeschichte, ich gratuliere dir ganz herzlich zu deinem 25. jährigen Geburtstag und wünsche dir alles Gute und viel Erfolg für mindestens die nächsten 25 Jahre. Hello everybody, my name is Tina Asmussen and as you can hear, I feel very comfortable in Switzerland. I'm working at the ETH in Zurich at the Chair for Science Studies and I was postdoctoral research fellow at the Max Planck Institute for the History of Science from 2014 to 17. First in Sven Dupré's research group Art and Knowledge in Pre-Modern Europe and then in Department 1. For me here in Zurich, the institute is not very far. So on the left side is Michael Hagner's office. On the right side is the office of Max Stadler. Behind me are the offices of Monika Wulz and Niels Güttler. So we are a happy team of ex-MPI fellows. And this is great. This shows me that the MPI for the history of science is not just a place where you once stay, have a wonderful time and then you have to leave. It's a place that connects. It connects people, ideas and countries and it creates enduring boundaries. And this is fantastic. And also from a very personal point of view, my time at the Institute was fundamental. Because in autumn 2015, my son was born. Only um, six months later, then the son of my office maid was born. And so Marius Booning and I, we had a lot to talk. And not just on our research project, but on concrete daily concerns. And the support that I got from the Institute and the time was fantastic. So. I could not just enjoy new parents' happiness, and, but also make progresses with my research project, publish my PhD, and also successfully apply for new jobs. And I'm very grateful for that time and the support. And yes, thank you. And I'm always happy to come back. And enough from my side. Have a great time and let's celebrate. Goodbye from Zurich. Hello, my name is Fernando Vidal. I'm a historian of the human sciences and was fellow and then permanent research scholar in department two from 1999 to 2012. I'm now a research professor of the Catalan Institution for Research and Advanced Studies in Barcelona. 
Like everybody else, I benefited at MPI from extraordinary research opportunities and an exceptionally stimulating environment. Both were supported by an impeccable administration and an exquisitely helpful team of librarians. In Department 2, Rainy Daston inspired a unique combination of intellectual rigor and creative freedom. Trying to live up to these two demanding virtues has left a profound mark. But MPI's main gift to me has been the way scholarly conversations could result in deep, lasting friendships. This is certainly what most enriched me and what I miss the most. For there is one great place in Berlin that keeps out the world's ugly din. That place is in Dahlem, yet for many it's been home, both an ivory tower and a grand space to roam. As it turns 25 and it takes a new turn, let us wish it the ambition to keep up its drive and a good many happy returns.